Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Legalese. Please present How to Avoid Scams. I am the curator and creator of Legalese, please, and I am your host, Natasha Robinson. If you could be so kind, if you could drop in the chat where you are and take some time and greet me, I will be happy, happy, happy to acknowledge you. Please, while you are watching, click like and then share it. Click like and then share it because this is an important information. I'm glad to have you here. And I want to make sure that we are where we say we're going to be and that you take a moment now. Hit that share button right now because we are going to be giving some great information to you. I will say good morning to Kimberly Purdue. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing? Good morning, Dr. Jamie. How are you doing? I should say good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sora, my team. Good afternoon, Corley. Just glad to see you. I'm glad to always be supported by you as you support me. Good afternoon, I'm glad for everyone to be here. If you have not already, I need you to go to where you are, whatever platform you are on, and I want you to hit the share button. Not only because I'm on, although I am good, but because I want to make sure that we get all this great information out. We always say that people hear us for a lack of knowledge, um, but at this point, it's not necessarily a lack anymore is it is access. I mean, I guess a barrier to access is lack, but you know what I'm saying is that you get all that information and knowledge you need, but if you don't have a lot of knowledge and information as well as access to it, then you are going to hear it, and we don't want that. So if you are on right now, please click like and share right now as you do so. I will continue to see everybody. Hey, so we just Okay, how was that? Still the same? Let me know something. Better? 
Better, much better. We can hear you. Okay, great, great thumbs up, crystal clear. Okay, all right, because you know I was about to get hot. I was about to get hot because I'm like, that just lets me know that there are forces that are trying to come against this information. So I just want to make sure that you all okay. So I'm going to go back and say hello. Hello, Sora T. And hello, my friend Rachel from law school. Corley J is here. We back in business. You know how black women are. Tomika, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. We're going to keep this party going on. As I said, if you are here and you have not shared yet, please do me a favor and click like and share. Click like and share. This is Legalese Please. My name is Natasha Robinson. I am the creator and curator of this digital space where we are able to provide information that helps decode, demystify, and deconstruct legal language. And so I said that I was going to be on here until uh, about 2.45 or so. And then if you had any questions, I will come back and answer them. If you have not already, click like and share on your different platforms. Want to greet Facebook Live. I want to greet YouTube Live. And I want to greet LinkedIn Live. Thank you all from these three platforms who are joining us today. Thank you so very much for being here on this side of the internet. Uh, I just want to make sure that you all are here. Uh, yes. Hey, Kanita, how you doing? Good. It sounds good. T said the devil's a <laughs> You know, that's what they would be in church and God is exalted. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. But anyway, yes. Uh, you know, there are always uh, forces and systems and the things that are trying to come against what we are doing, which is for good, but we are still persevering. And you know that anyone who has lived before us has had probably even more barriers to uh, get through and go over. Uh, and so we didn't always have technology. Sometimes we just had uh, birds that we could use. Sometimes we had mail. Sometimes we had sounds in the hush harbors. Sometimes we had just different ways of communication. And so we are not going to be defeated. All right. So if you have not already, I want you to click like, I want you to click share. Um, so I also want you to know that for today, as promised, uh, usually on Tuesdays for the last couple of weeks, I have had $20 Tuesdays where I have taken information that usually you would pay hundreds and hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars for. And I wanted to offer it to my community for the low, low price of $20. Well, in the last 24 hours, really the last uh, 12 hours, I have heard of at least four different opportunities uh, where scammers have tried to be prevalent, where scammers have tried to be prevalent. This was already scheduled for me to talk about how to avoid scams. But when I learned about my loved ones being targeted uh, unjustly and unfairly, I said, you know what? I'm going to take this topic out of $20 Tuesdays. And on today, which is Giving Tuesday, I am giving this information, uh, this webinar, this uh, education, if you will, for free. It costs nothing. I believe in my community and I love my communities in which I am in. And I want to make sure that you share this information, not just because it's good information to share, but also because it is information that will benefit you. It is information that will protect you. And we are trying to make sure that in speaking truth to power, we speak accuracy, okay? We speak uh, legal expertise. We engage in the sharing of information and the sharing of our testimonies. And so put into the chat, if you wanna tag someone, if you want to share this live with your pastors, with your professors, with other colleagues, coworkers, family members, uh, young people, young at heart, whoever it is, put them into the chat so you can tag them so they can come on over to this side of the internet so that they can watch live or that they can watch later. Okay. Um, so let me just come on in the chat and say, uh, yes, of course, to be trying it, but we are graded. You are absolutely right. Please like and share. Thank you, cousin. Do I take cash app? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Let me, uh, come on here and put, uh, my information 
so that uh, you all can get all of this, uh, this uh, uh, good teaching, if you will. Um, this is information I have gleaned uh, in, in studying uh, about this topic. And so I want to make sure rather than you go somewhere and having to uh, look for this information, I am going to provide this information to you. So all you got to do is if you've been talking to, you know, Paw Paw or Nana or Big Mama or uh, uh, Little TT, whoever it is, all they need to do is watch this so that they can learn as an individual, as well as in community, how to make sure we are not the target of scams. And even if we have been scammed, what we can do to make sure that it does not happen to us again, and also to learn about how to protect not just ourselves, but each other. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, let me make sure that I share my screen. If you have not already, please click like and share. And I am going to get started. I'm going to monitor your comments as well. So if there are any questions, make sure that you put the questions into the chat. And if I do not answer them when I first see them, I will answer them when I uh, come back. Because remember, I said uh, we are going to have some time for questions and answers. So uh, you won't see me per se for the whole presentation, but you will hear my voice. All right. And, and, and as promised, I will give to you the PDF information that allows you to look at this information as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into the chat right now. So if you are one of those persons who are like, look, I need to follow along as you are uh, reading aloud, then if you go to this uh, link right here that I am putting into the chat for Facebook and for uh, YouTube, for LinkedIn, let me come on and see if I can come on that side of the internet for you and I can put it into the chat for you so that you are able to follow along as well. Then that way that will definitely help with you understanding what you need to do and things that you need to consider as you are watching this as well. Okay. So I have put it in into all of the chats, into YouTube, into Facebook, and into LinkedIn. So let's go ahead and get started. Click like and share. How to avoid scams. This is what we are going to be discussing in our time together. If you have paid attention to anything, then anything that is everything has been the subject of a scam. Uh, whether it be old school, uh, we just want to try and get your uh, ID or your photo all the way up to COVID scams where people are trying to engage in uh, the falsification of um, uh, falsification of, of uh, uh, information of tests of testing. Uh, Rachel, you are okay. I see you say what happened. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Please let me know if you can hear me. It seems like there have been some technical. Oh, I already said you see me, but you, I mean, you hear me, but you're not going to see me. I, I said that you are going to hear me, but you are not going to see me because the way in which I have the presentation. Okay. Uh, you see, I'm right here. I'm still right here. Okay. So I just am taking myself off of the screen, as I said, so that you can see the whole presentation, okay? Um, I don't want you to see me. I don't want you to see me. I'm going to disappear. I am strategically taking myself off of the computer so that you can see the full presentation. See, watch this. See, okay? I can still see you. You just can't see me. You can hear me. That is strategic. All right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move forward. All right. So when we talk about how to avoid scams, how to avoid scams, the purpose of the document that I'm going to provide to you and this webinar is to equip ourselves with tools to minimize and possibly eliminate any impact that potential scams may have on us, to us, and through us, as well as those we care about. In this webinar, you're going to receive practical and legal strategies on how to be proactive in our approaches to protection 
from now on. OK, this may have uh, been part of your uh, lived experience and that you have been careful. This webinar is to keep you being careful. And if you may have thought you were careful, but in the event you realize after this, there are some things you need to tighten. Don't worry about that. We're going to make sure that you are able to tighten up what you need to tighten up. OK, so the document that I have included in the chat that I am going to put in the chat again is going to serve as a resource guide for places and people to contact in the event that you or someone you know has been the subject of a potential and or completed scam. All right. Feel free to share this guide with others. OK, so let me come on and let you know that I have created this guide, this PDF for you also to share. So you are getting two things. You are getting the teaching and then you are getting the resources. So feel free to spread this all around because anyone who uses it will know that it will come from the desk of legalese, please. OK, so now we're going to move on. So according to Consumer Affairs, according to Consumer Affairs, the top 10 scams of 2022 are the following. Identity theft, imposter scams, debt collector scams, investment related scams, business opportunity scams, prizes, lotteries, and sweepstakes, healthcare scams, advanced payment scams, foreign money offers and fake checks, foreclosure relief and debt management. OK, now it's important to note, these are not the only scams that are going on. But according to Consumer Affairs, when they did a nationwide investigation into the types of scams that uh, are uh, is going on right now, these are the top 10 scams of this year. OK, we haven't even stepped into December, but so far. The top scams are someone trying to take your identity, someone posing as if they are one person when they are really someone else, trying to collect a debt. So if you have any type of debt that you're owed, uh, that you are supposed to pay rather, and sometimes there may be companies that will say, hey, uh, your, your balance has been transferred to a third person. And so this third person, meaning this institution or this company is now in charge of trying to collect that debt. Sometimes you will have scammers come in and they will be very rude. They will be very pushy and they will say, okay, if you don't pay this right now, then you're going to be arrested or your, your, uh, uh, your property is going to be seized, your finances are gonna be seized, okay? So those are de debt collector scams. Investment-related scams. My mama will call that a pyramid scheme, where if you do this to this person, then this person do it to this person, and this person get paid based on, that is a, an example of invested investment-related scams. You have business opportunity scams where you will have people say, if you would just send me $500 today, then what I will do is I will put your name on this and then you give that money and then you realize your money has gone nowhere but to their pocket, okay? Prizes, lotteries, and sweepstakes. You have to verify that you win what you say you win because if the person who is offering these prizes or lotteries or sweepstakes starts asking you for more information than what is needed, then what happens is you have not won anything, but you have lost everything, okay? Healthcare scams. I have had loved ones where they have had uh, people come and say, uh, we know you're in the hospital and you owe this hospital debt. And if you do not pay this, then what is going to happen is, is that you are going to get your insurance discontinued. And then the people, now they have to navigate between their illness and their anxiety. And so what they do is they really just want relief. They want whoever is harassing them to not harass them anymore. But the problem is it's a scam. OK, advanced payment scams where someone says, you know what, we have uh, selected you to do this and to do that. But in order to get in, we will need an advanced payment of X amount of dollars. And without you vetting that person, you then are sending money. You're basically giving money away. OK, foreign money offers and fake checks, 
Funny more money offers. Sometimes I chuckle when I see some of my buddies on social media that says, I would not come into your direct messages, your DMs, and tell you I am stuck in another country overseas and to send me money. And yet there are people who will fall for that instead of taking just a moment to think, well, if I am as close to this person as I think I am, they will contact me directly. And if they contacted me directly, they wouldn't be coming into my DMs. They would text me. They would email me. They would whatever. Okay. And so you have to be careful about that. Fake checks. There are ways to determine if checks are real or if checks are fake. And usually sometimes in our, um, in our anxiety or maybe a little bit, you know, desperation or in our wishing, someone gives something to us and we are so excited. And then we go to a bank, a currency exchange, a credit union. And without looking at the document to verify that it is what it says it is, we're just happy to get it. And then what ends up happening is not only is the check fake, but that money comes out of our account. And in most cases, where I have represented clients charged with this, you end up facing felony charges like like uh, forgery, which is a felony charge in the state of Illinois. OK, and this lastly, foreclosure relief and debt management. Some of us have had to go through the situations of uh, uh, facing foreclosure. And so what happens is that we may be in conversation with our mortgage company and a scammer will come in and act as if they are a member of that mortgage company. And then we're paying to the mortgage people we think we're paying. But actually, not only are we going to lose our property, but now we have lost money. OK, so these are the top 10 scams of 2022. If you want to read more information about that, you just go to Consumer Affairs. You do your Google search Consumer Affairs and then type in top 10 scams of 2022. All right. Now, what I also looked up is and I'm about to disappear. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just getting off the screen. Top financial scams targeting elders. All right. Also on Consumer Affairs. The top scams that target elders are online shopping scams, tech support scams, imposter scams, romance scams, sweepstakes scams, and other scams. So the Federal Trade Commission has been keeping records of how these scams are carried out. The main way that there are scams against elders is through phone calls, okay? Phone calls. And then the next way that these are carried out is online theft, where you think you're going to a reputable website, and in fact, you are not. Then the third is consumer-initiated contact. That's when they call you and say, uh, we have received your name and your information, and we have this uh, sale, or we have this health insurance, life insurance, where usually the price is this, but if you pay this, then you will get a discounted rate. OK, email scams and then mail fraud. All of these come from the link that's at the bottom of this page. Elder financial abuse statistics. This is as of 2022. So I want you to get in your mind a loved one uh, that is you consider them to be an elder. And I want you to think about how they could be facing scams. These are the top financial ones, but again, these are not the only ones, okay? Romance scams. I cannot tell you about all of the news stories and reports where you have had elders giving away 10, 15 thousands of dollars to persons that they thought uh, needed their help or persons who they thought they were in relationship with or getting to know when in actuality they were being scammed. They were being scammed out of their retirement or their pension or whatever it is. OK, one thing I know about those who I consider to be elders is a lot of times they tell me after the fact. And if they don't tell me after the fact and I find out, then what they say is I didn't want to bother you. I didn't see it as a big deal. OK, and part of that is them trying to shield us because they don't want to be a burden. Part of that is them minimizing 
the severity of what is actually happening. And then part of that is embarrassment. Okay. Part of that is shame as we all have experienced, as we all have gone through. And so if something feels on the inside that something is a little bit off or is a little too good to be true, I have nothing against goodness, but I have everything against fraud. And I do not question anymore my intuition. So sometimes it means asking the elders, are you feeling safe with me double checking on you, making sure that the mail that comes in is really what it says it is, making sure. And I had this problem with one of my uh, relatives where uh, they have a ring. And so there were people that were coming around the ring and they were trying to serve some official papers. But the way in which they did it brought uh, a level of nervousness to the relative and anger to me because I said there's a way that you do things. And particularly if you know that a person is advanced in age, there is a way that you go about notifying them and walking around where they're watching their ring surveillance, that is nerve wracking. And what's going to happen is you're going to get another side of me. So I was quick to use, as I have stated earlier, my love language. If you don't know what my love language is, there is this study uh, book that says that there are five love languages. I would add that there's a sixth one, which is cussing. We'll talk about that offline. Okay. So I just go hard for my family members. So I'm disappearing again. Main methods of scamming. In my experience, and when I say my experience, I'm not just talking about as an attorney. I'm talking about as a layperson, as someone who someone had the audacity to try and scam me. And sometimes they were successful and other times they were not. I'll tell you about that in a minute. In my experience, the main methods of scamming have been emails, letters, calls, in-person visits, social media, and text, okay? Email, which I have a uh, mortgage provider where uh, I got a letter saying, oh, we are going to be uh, selling your mortgage to a third party. And if you don't pay this right now, then you could be foreclosed on and all that type of stuff. So, you know, I called the mortgage company and they said, well, you know, sometimes things are sold to a third party, but we don't have in our records that we did that. Okay, well, then that means who the hell is calling me or contacting me? Okay, y'all need to, you know, get that tightened up. All right. Those are examples of sometimes emails, letters. As I stated in an earlier live, I will tell you all here, I had someone claim unemployment on my name while I was still working with the institution. Okay, so I just happened to get a letter in the mail and the letter said, we have confirmed your unemployment benefits and we are going to put your employment, your unemployment benefits on this bank card. Whoa, Nelly, uh, did I get fired? Did I get fired and not know about it? So then I had to call human resources. They're like, no, you're very much employed. So what did I have to do? I had to then backtrack and then I had to sit by my, my uh, front window and just watch my mailbox. Why is that? Because in the letter, they said, we are going to send you this bank card. And on this bank card is going to have all of the money for your first time unemployment benefits. Now, if I had not intercepted slash tackled the mail carrier, then what would have happened? That meant that a person could have come to my house, gone inside my mailbox, taken that car, because that's what they were waiting on, and then start, you know, going through the street, acting like me. And then what would have happened? Not only would I have been on the hook financially for that money, there's a great possibility that the government could have come in and said, you are now trying to defraud us. And I'm like, I, of all the things that I have time to do, I got no time to be messing around with the federal government. But these are things that could happen. And these are things that I have seen happen with other people. Uh, Donna Brown, Carmen, you said they stole your identity and filed unemployment. That is such a, 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 a uh, hard thing to go through. And also, when I contacted in the state of Illinois, it's called IDES, Illinois Department of Employment Security. I still haven't heard from them. Okay, I had to go through my bank 
and shut down my banking so that there weren't any deposits. And I had to make a police report. Uh, I did all these things, but I did not get any type of uh, leadership as to who I should talk to and what I should do. So this is part of the reason why I am doing uh, this live for you. Uh, so you get calls. Uh, you're getting calls all the time. Now, depending upon who you, what service provider you have, there will be sometimes you will get a number on the phone and it will say underneath spam. If it says spam, don't answer it. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, you may get calls. They may actually have you believing that, that they are really who they say they are. But when anyone is asking for that precious information, your social security number, uh, your banking information, all that type of stuff, just you'd rather be safe than sorry. OK, in person visits, there have been a number of cases where everything has resulted from people trespassing on land, getting information all the way to uh, home invasions, which is where a person breaks into your home with the intention of committing a felony inside. OK, you have to vet these persons who say that they are with uh, your electric company, your gas company, your water company. And if you don't feel com uh, 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 if you don't feel comfortable, then make sure that you have someone with you who is able to be there so that you're not there by yourself. I've seen this too many times in the lives of elders and those who live with illnesses. OK, so make sure uh, that you are vetting these persons. Social media, social media. I cannot tell you. I see my sister Soror coming in here. Hello, Dr. Sampson. Let me tell you, she just did a live yesterday that I saw today and it ticked me off, ticked me all the way off, set me off because of the fact that this scammer chose to target two of my favorite people in the whole wide world and basically upon a picture that was misrepresented what happened was they used this picture to top to try and defraud a third party okay set me completely off when i tell you i was hot i had steam dr sampson coming out of my ears and i also knew that uh because i had already had this uh, 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 legalese please uh, presentation already set. That was spirit telling me, take it out of the $20 Tuesdays and make it public for everyone because it can happen to you. It can happen to you. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. Okay. Yes, Dr. Jamie, hot. Like you could have cooked some salmon on my skin because I was hot. Okay. So let me, let me, let me, tell you this real quick. If you have people sliding into your DMs, your direct messaging, your inboxes, your messenger, talking about, as Dr. Sampson has said earlier, I have a message from the Lord and they're not trying to sing the rest of the song. Well, if the Lord is supposed to be strong and mighty, mighty in battle, mighty to save, omnipotent and omniscient is great, oh Lord then why would God skip over my ass and tell you something to tell me? Okay, that is a scam. You know what? If God hasn't told me yet, then, then I'm none the wiser. Okay, I need you to believe in God if that's, what, if that's what you do and have a mind, okay? Have your mind. I need you to be a thinking believer, a thinking person of faith as Dr. Renita Weems talks about, okay? Think about these things. If you are a person who engages in African spirituality, one of the main tenets any priest or priestess will tell you is they will never slide into your DMs and promise you a reading or a divination or any service that goes completely against their ethos, their, 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 their ethos, their belief system. OK, so think about these things. No reputable person is going to slide into your DMs and say, you know, the Lord told me to tell you that uh, today is your day. And for uh, $50, today can be your day all day. That's bullshit. Don't believe it. Stop it. Okay? Take the time to think. Take the time to feel what comes up in your body. Because if you have to ask, 
then the answer is no. <laughs> if you have to ask, the answer is no. Okay. It's kind of like uh, when we were all younger and we were like, I wonder if that person is cheating on me. If you got to ask, you already got the answer. You already know. Okay. So listen to your gut. Listen to in African spirituality, it's called your, your Ori, O-R-I. Listen to your intuition. Listen to your mother wit. Okay. Don't turn that off. Turn that up and turn it on. And then lastly, we get texts. Texts that say, if you click right here, you can claim your prize. And then you're taken to some, some outside third party website. And next thing you know, they got all your information. All I am saying is take some time and think. Okay. Uh, one of my uh, relatives, when we were coming up, they said, use your head for more than a hat rack. What that meant was you got this big old noggin. <laughs> you have this big forehead. And if I was a signifier, I would say some of us have an eight head. But whatever size your head is, inside is a brain. And in that brain is what's called a prefrontal cortex, which means that that is the area of your brain that talks about rational decision making and foresight. So use it, okay? I'm I'm trying like I'm fussing. I'm not fussing, but I get hot and I get excited when I am trying to present and protect my people. Okay, so if you have been scammed, this is the time when you start putting into the comments if you have any questions or comments. If you have been scammed, these are the steps that I recommend. I'm going into the legal part now as well as the personal part. If you have been scammed, make a police report and you're going to get a copy of that report. And if you don't get a copy of that report, get a copy of the incident report number. Why is that important? I'm glad you asked me. Because when you talk to your financial institutions, whether it's a bank, currency exchange, credit union, what have you, uh, whether uh, you are talking to the three credit bureaus, they are going to ask you, have you reported this to the police? Now, usually when you call the police, you have a perpetrator, alleged perpetrator, and you have a victim. One of these identities you do not know most times, and that is the identity of the perpetrator. It doesn't matter. You can still make a police report. You can have a police officer come to your house, or you can go into the police station and make this report and be very open in terms of what was told to you and what you did. Now, that does not mean share your personal information and 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 get scammed all over again. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is your name, your telephone number, address, who you talked to, what was said, what websites you went to, how much money you gave, how you paid it, all those type of things, and then get that incident report number so that when you have to cancel your cards or put holds on your uh, banking accounts or whatever it is you do, you have an incident report number that that person or the institution can rely upon and that they can continue to say, okay, this is a valid claim. Call your financial institutions, like I said, your bank, your credit union, whatever. In your state, call your Department of Employment Security. Now, in Illinois, it's called IDES, Illinois Department of Employment Security. You want to contact the Fraud and Identity Theft Department, okay? And make sure that you either leave a message or if you talk to someone, please take down what information they use as identifiers. So if they give you an ID number, write that down. If they don't ever tell you what their name is, ask them. To whom am I speaking? And you know what? You write it down because you want to make your own record. You do not want to rely upon the human strengths or frailties of someone who does not have the emergency that you have. Okay? You have to be able to advocate for yourself. And if you can't do it, then trust someone that can do that for you. OK, check all three credit bureau reports, not one, not two, but all three Experian, TransUnion and Equifax, because what may be on one may not be on the other. You are also entitled to have free credit reports and depending upon your bank institution, sometimes they will also uh, give you access to what your credit report is, as well as your credit score.
Okay, so check on that because there are things such as uh, soft inquiries and hard inquiries. Soft inquiries do not necessarily affect your credit score, but hard inquiries might. So just ask them before you do that. Call your city, your state uh, consumer fraud identity theft hotline because I promise you what you may go through does not mean you've gone through it alone. There are a lot of us, myself included, who have been scammed. And there are ways in which you can report that information to other people. If you are working and you have an unemployment claim that has been filed against you, a lot of that was happening during the beginning of the pandemic. Call your human resources department so that they know, so that they don't say, oh, well, since you're unemployed, that must mean you're fired. Next thing you know, all your insurance is canceled. All of your uh, medical, dental, vision benefits are canceled. Have that conversation. If you are retired or if you are paying into a pension, call the Pension and Retirement Board to make sure that that does not go against you in a negative way. You can call the U.S. Department of Labor. You can call the prosecution's office in the Illinois called the state's attorney's office. In other states is a district attorney or a prosecutor. And if you have been scammed, most importantly, keep a copy a log of who you talk to, when you talk to them, and what was said. Because a lot of times we'll come back and say, well, we talked to such and such and so-and-so, and then all of a sudden, nobody knows what you're talking about, okay? So you want to make sure you keep a copy of that. To be proactive in your protection, do change your passwords frequently. Now, I know this is a sore spot because we live in spaces and places where ain't nobody got time for 16 damn passwords. Well, I feel you and you're going to have to shift some of that. OK, you can't always be putting down your parents marriage anniversary. You can't always be putting down the date that you crossed into your fraternity sorority. You cannot always put down the middle name of your oldest cousin. OK, and you definitely cannot put down always the maiden name of your parent. Okay. You're going to have to change some of this up. Okay. Whenever you get an email that says that there has been a data breach, check on that. Don't just say, well, I know somebody taking care of you. Don't know that. Watch it, monitor it, make sure that your information is not being produced or sent to a third party. Watch out for pop-up menus that ask for your permission to track. Sorry, Apple. Apple is good for that. OK, every time I get on the phone and I go to a website or I download an app, then here comes some uh, ask permission to track. Hell no, you don't need to track me. I know where I am. OK, but if you are not paying attention, then what happens is that you will hit that as the first choice instead of ask not to track. OK, the very first option is ask to, you know, allow to track. Make sure you read before you do your business, okay? Get data protection services. So sometimes for computers, uh, there are some programs that protect the content on the hard drive. Other times you have uh, what you call VPN protection, which is it monitors and scrambles where you go on the internet because a lot of times, let's say, we may have drop down menus uh, that will save our information and will uh, allow us, you know, we get tired of typing information. And so then it says, well, do you just want to save? And you're like, child, yeah, because ain't nobody trying to uh, do all that. Hey, Scholar, how you doing, Lavelle? It's good to see you. That's one of my babies. So make sure that whatever it is that you use, I'm not going to mention particular services because I don't want to feel like I am endorsing them. But what I will say is look into these services for your computer, for your internet, for your router, so that you can make sure that you are not in two places at the exact same time. And then one thing my mommy always has told me is keep a paper trail. We, we talk against paper, but paper is necessary. Uh, you're going to have to look up some at some time. You're going to have to write some down at some time. So make sure you have that somewhere so you know who to talk to and when to talk to them. And if you go out of town or if you travel out of the country or if you are going into the hospital, OK, make sure you leave a paper trail for someone or someones that you trust 
so that they are able to access information that you may need in the event that you are incapacitated or unavailable. Okay. Do not ever, 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 ever give out your social security number. Don't do it. And definitely do not walk around with your social security card. I can't tell you how many people I have gotten into it with where I've said, I know that in order to get a driver's license or to get hired, you need certain things. But when that need is over, you place that information into a unaccessible for public place. Okay. Do not use private information on publicly shared computers. Uh, I have uh, worked many jobs in my life. And sometimes I remember while I work that I need to pay a light bill, but I'm at work. And so uh, what I do is I may pay that light bill on my work computer. And guess what? What ends up happening is that my credit card or debit card information is now on that public computer. I know y'all wouldn't do nothing like that. And because, you know, I work for myself now, can't nobody fire me because I quit. But there have been times in my life where I have had to handle some things on a public computer. And all I'm saying to you is just don't do it. Okay. If you can call your creditor and say, hey, can you wait till I get home? Uh, or, you know, I got you, whatever it is. Okay. Here's another one that I've gotten to people with. Do not share mailing addresses with anyone other than people who have actually lived at your address. Now, I know this is, um, you know, a little bit uh, 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 troublesome, but I stand by it. I stand by it. Don't have nobody using your address unless they live there. Okay. I'm not going to go into any more about that because that could be a whole live unto itself. And then lastly, do not feel ashamed or embarrassed. OK, there are people who I know and who I love that have been like, man, how did I miss the signs? How did I not pick up on this? It's because you're human and scams are created to be slick, because if you pick them off at the very beginning, there would be no need for scams because no one would believe it. But because of different iterations or different stages in our lives, we may just be the one that a scammer chooses. And I hate to say it, but that's real life. But don't fret yourself none because you are not someone who is gullible. You are not someone who is stupid. You are not anyone that needs to hide or to be embarrassed or shamed by something that happened to you, okay? It has happened to more people than you think. So just give yourself some grace. And then lastly, here are some websites and here are some phone numbers that you can use that will allow you to um, contact different people um, uh, in the event that you are uh, being scammed or in the event that you are um, you want to be proactive in making sure that you are not scammed. I have put into the comments the PDF link when I get offline. I'm going to put it again in the comments for you. You can share, 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 share this, share this, share this, share this, because I have created it for you to share it. Okay. And then lastly, let's keep in touch. Okay. So these are all the spaces and the places where you can find me. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. OK, if you want to subscribe to YouTube and watch not just this episode, but previous episodes, you can definitely do that. If you want to visit my website, you can go to www.legalesepleased.com. If you want to email me confidentially, you can email me at legalesepleased at gmail.com. And I promise you, I'm not going to tell you business, OK, because that's not what I do. I am a person who keeps things confidential. OK, and so I want to make sure that we don't perish because of the lack of knowledge, but we also don't perish because of the lack of access to reputable knowledge. OK, so I have been on here for 53 minutes. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, I want you to now put them in the chat because I said to you I would end uh, 10 minutes early. So that uh, if anyone has any questions or comments, you can put in the chat. But for those who are still here, I ask you to do two things. One, share, share, share this with other persons if you have not already. 
and then tell me in the chat, what did you think about this presentation? How are you feeling in your mind? How are you feeling in your body? Do you need more information? Do you feel like you have been informed? You know, take some time and tell me. All right. Take some time and tell me. I wish I had some music for you. I do not because I do not want my broadcast to be interrupted because I played some information that no one has given written and verbal express consent for me to play. OK, are y'all still there? I don't see anybody saying anything. OK, um, I don't know if you all are just shocked from the information. I don't think that's it. Um, but I am going to put information where uh, you can subscribe. So if you want to subscribe to Legally's Please YouTube channel, you can do that by going over to youtube.com and typing in Legally's Please. You can also go to the website. I got a whole website, legalesepleasecom And there is some information uh, about ways that you can connect with me if you want to uh, hire me to talk to uh, different church groups or different civic organizations. Or if you just got a couple of good good friends and you're like, you know what? Let's bring out Legalese, please, so we can just have a half hour or whatever. I'm available for that, okay? So you can email me and let me know. Now, if you want to support financially, I know it's, it's Giving Tuesday. This is me giving to you, to the community. This is because I believe in the community. But if you want to do what they call give me some scratch money, that is automatically uh, 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 welcome and accepted because what happens is that goes back into the business. It goes back into the business. Um, for in terms of upcoming events, next Tuesday, we are back with $20 Tuesdays. If you wish to uh, learn about how to do a financial power of attorney, that is uh, next Tuesday, December 6th. And then Tuesday, December 13th is power of attorney for health care. So those are some things that you can avail yourselves of. If you want to uh, register for that, this is the link for that. Um, I will give you that information and I will put that also in the chat. So if you are interested, you can do that as well. OK, um, so let me put that in the chat. Um, uh, oh, I see your comment, uh, Coralie, and you don't have to feel that way. You don't have to feel that way. Um, I don't know what's happening here. Um, you do not have to feel that way. Uh, you have a, let's see, uh, Kanina, you said you have a question, but you will ask in the finance. Okay. All right. Then I will see you then. Rachel, I feel it was informative. Can I sue a blogging company? who copyrighted my blog that I pay for? That's a different type of question uh, because that's not necessarily a scam unless uh, someone purported to represent the company. Uh, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just talk online, uh, offline. I think that is a different type of question uh, that is not necessarily for this particular form. But the answer is you can sue anybody. <laughs> That's a short answer. You can sue anybody. Uh, but can you can you be uh, 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 can you prevail is is the question that you want to know the answer to. So I will uh, uh, think about that and I will get that to you. OK, it is 255. I have been on for 57 minutes and 30, 31, 32 seconds. OK, so. I uh, want to make sure I have answered all your questions. If you have not already, please click like and click share. I thank you so much for allowing me to come into your space and your place with this information. I hope you have the best type of day and the best type of week. And thank you so much. Take care. Bye.